All right, I'm gonna show you how to do what we call Sunday Sunday roast, I guess. I try to cook on Sunday so mama don't have to. And the easiest way to do it's in the crock pot. So, I like to use a chuck roast. Uh, I guess it depends on how many people you're trying to feed. But what I do is the night before, uh, you know, Saturday night, I'll just turn it on low and I'll put this roast into the water in the crock pot and I like to have enough whoops to cover it really good because tomorrow morning uh, before we leave for church I'm gonna dump all of the carrots in there that I cook and I cut up two stalks of celery I'll drop them in there now and diced up one onion and I'll put that in there and I just like to use Montreal steak seasoning. I know it's for steak, but it has garlic pepper and other things like that in there. It's really good, so uh, I'll just cover it pretty good. Probably about like that. And then just turn it on, on low, and I'll set it to stay on all night. That's all you gotta do. And then in the morning we'll put the carrots in there. And I usually um, cut up the potatoes and stuff and put them in another crock pot. So as soon as we get home from church, the carrots, everything's done, the potatoes done, all we gotta do is make the mashed potatoes and some gravy and you're ready to eat. And you don't waste no time and you can take a nap. There you go. Been going for about 10 hours now. Eight or nine hours, something like that. And I'm peeling the carrots, cutting them up. I'm gonna add them to that. So they'll be ready when we get home. So I'll cook another it's 7.30 now in the morning. I'll cook until about 1.30, 1. It'll be perfect. Just finishing the potatoes up. We like to have mashed potatoes with our uh, roast. So I just put them in another crock pot and put them on right, right before we get dressed, about eight o'clock, at between 7.30 and eight. We get home about 12.31 or whatever it is and uh, they're ready to go. All you gotta do is mix them up. So that's what I'm finishing up and then I'll be ready to get dressed. Good thing I only cook on Sundays. That's not true. <laughs> potatoes and I'm going to make the gravy for this. Smells delicious. What we're going to do is take this juice and make gravy, but first we got to get all this out. Let's fall apart tender. juice in this pot. We're going to add cornstarch to it to thicken it. We'll make gravies better. We have one in the family that likes McCormick brown gravy, but... Christian, you want us to make that too? 
Oh. Yeah, I'll make both. What? You want the other gravy or are you happy with just the homemade? I don't care. I've been finishing off this little bed in the snap. Okay, to do that, we need. Do I need to stop this? No, uh uh. We're going to put some cold water and some cornstarch in here. We're going to do about three or four tablespoons of cornstarch to about a half to three quarters cup of cold water. Stir it up real good. We got our gravy over here to boiling. Okay, our juice from the, the broth. It's a broth, isn't it? Yeah. And we're going to add this to it. It don't take long, and it'll get start getting thick. Won't take long. See how watery it is right now. The longer this cooks, it's going to get thicker. Okay, you'll see that it's getting, you see that celery in there and stuff, and the garlic, but see how thick it's getting? It's getting to be a thicker, it's a natural gravy. Okay, we got it all, we're going to pray. Thank you, Lord, for this day, for all you've done for us, for keeping us safe today. Bless this food and nurture our bodies. In Jesus' name we ask, amen. Amen. Again. Okay, I wanted to say one more thing about this gravy. You can get it as thick as you want with that cornstarch, but make sure you add the cornstarch to cold water. You just keep on doing just a little at a time until you get it to the thickness and the consistency that you want. Don't add it straight to the, the hot mixture or you'll have lumps.